All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. It is Wednesday, and you know what that means. Time to dive deeper into some Wednesday wisdom and diving deeper into the wisdom of the Corpus Hermeticum and the Divine Pymander. Original manuscript, Hermes Trismegistus, 3rd century AD. This is a new edition, 2015, edited by Tarl Warwick. And now it was interesting, somebody said in a comment last week, I thought Hermes, or Thoth, was a mythical god deity. And so he asked the question, I didn't know there was something actually physically authored by him. So I will admit that that can be a debatable idea. And so I appreciate somebody commenting that, because yeah, if Hermes was a deity or a god, how then was he creating manuscripts? That's open for discussion. But thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being here. And thank you. Let's dive into, because last week in this series, we began going through Hermes Trismegistus, his first book. And that led us into this idea. He said, oh, my son, write this first book, both for humanity's sake and for piety towards God. And then we looked at the idea of piety and devotion, or a... Mm, well, anyways, we went over that in the last video. Number two, for there can be no religion more true or just than to know the things that are. Not to need a savior or salvation or need something outside of yourself, but to use your divine principle of mind that you have been given through creation and the power of creation and use your own true power of divinity because we are divine and sovereign and free for there can be no religion more true or just than to know the things that are this means the open-minded asking of questions questions that in some religions are forbidden to be asked and called heresy and so, with that, it says, and to acknowledge thanks to them. Uh-oh, we are. We, but to acknowledge thanks to them is also a key principle. And this is something we talked about yesterday in yesterday's video, um, reading from the 27th verse of the Tao Te Ching, as well as the wisdom of Dr. David R. Hawkins, and this idea about the universe just being what it is, rather than the human notions of duality, of good and bad, or this should be that way and this shouldn't be that way, but just knowing what is, or as was described here, to know the things that are and to acknowledge thanks for all things, for what is, regardless of our human notions or opinions about it. And so here in the Corpus Hermeticum, it is saying the same thing. To acknowledge thanks for all things and to, quote unquote, him or it or, you know, to I think to give God a masculine name. But in this philosophy, I believe it separates it from the feminine nature of Earth. But let's continue. Much learning to be done, and this is, we are only in the very, very beginning of this particular book. On this channel, we also went through the Hermetica as well, so if you missed that series, be sure to check that out. But, so for there can be no religion, this is the key of today, knowing the things that are, and the rules of the nature of reality, or existence, or the universe, natural law and universal law and so acknowledging thanks for the things that are to that which made them which thing i shall not cease to continually do and so hermes asks or thought what then should a man do O oh father to lead his life well, seeing that there is nothing here in this mortal realm, true. And so he says, be pious, 
and religious, O my son, for he that does so is the best and highest philosopher, and without philosophy it is impossible to ever attain the height and exactness of spirituality, I'll say, and enlightenment. But the book reads, Piety and Religion. It's all open for debate, but let's now go to the things that are, and we will give you a list from verse 13 through probably, let's see, do, 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 70, 80. So we'll see where we make it here, ladies and gentlemen, but this is going to be a list of the nature of reality. Or the things that are, because he says, but now, O oh my son, I will by heads run through the things that are. Understand what I say, and remember what you hear. And once again, it seems to be a dialogue from Hermes, talking either to his father or to Atum, to God, because in the Hermetica he had relig uh, re uh, visions where he spoke to Atum, and Atum gave him explanations and an understanding and a higher knowledge to attain true knowledge. And remember, the key lesson that I got from the Hermetica was to understand any of this and to achieve what it's describing there as a height an enlightenment and a spiritual we must do this process in which Hermes described as pure philosophy is constant contemplation and let's go back to that because I want you to hear it the right way that is supposed to be said. We're going to reference the Hermetica here really quick in the prophecies of Hermes, because pure philosophy through constant contemplation. All right, here we go. The first words of the prophecies of Hermes, pure philosophy is spiritual striving through constant contemplation to attain true knowledge. Of Atum, the one God. And so, hopefully, we are pursuing this pure philosophy because he also said in his prophecies that in times to come, no one will pursue pure philosophy with single mindedness and a purity of heart. Does he mean there maybe that even with a piety? of heart, a respect, a reverence for this great lost wisdom of the ages. There's another great comment we had. He said, if it's lost, then how is it is something about, if it's lost, then how have we found it? And I, I love that too. That was hilarious. But I just like to say the lost wisdom because it's not everybody you hear talking and teaching about this philosophy of understanding the nature of reality and the things that are and usually when it comes to spirituality and religion quote unquote which i think are two far different things it is not often open-minded enough to talk about mysticism and astrology and you know all of these subjects and so let us begin this, O son, the guide and the way that leads thither, and get the victory in this contention and difficult life. And when you have overcome, return. But now, O my son, I will lead heads, I will by heads run through the things that are, and understand what I say, and remember what you hear. All things that are moved are moved only by that which is not immovable. 
I tried to clear that up because I think it's a typo. And I read this last week when we got to this point. What it actually says is all things that are moved, only that which is not is immovable. So, okay, it makes more sense this time when I read it slower. All things that are moved. No, no, no. See, all things that are are moved. All things that are moved, only that which is not, that isn't, is immovable. That's a deep one. That's probably why it's the first one. Now, let us run through by heads the things that are. Because remember, there could be no religion more pious and true than to know the things that are, ladies and gentlemen. Now, number 15, every body is able to be changed. And I'm just going to continue. I'm not going to say the number of each of these because each one is pretty much just a sentence. So, everybody is able to be changed. Not everybody is dissoluble. Some bodies are able to be dissolved. And I think when it's talking about bodies there, it's not just talking about human bodies. It's talking about physical forms of the things that we see here in reality, including rocks and trees and plants and the bodies, even including planetary bodies, possibly. So that's my theory here. Open for debate and comment in the comment section below. And thank you for being here. Hopefully we'll begin getting some value, if not already. Not everybody is dissoluble, but some bodies are able to be dissolved. Every living being is not mortal, nor every living thing is immortal. That which may be dissolved is also corruptible. That one makes me think of alchemy there. That which abides always is unchangeable. The dude abides. <laughs> Had to. That which abides always is unchangeable. That which is unchangeable is eternal. That which is always made is always corrupted. That which is made but once is never corrupted. Neither becomes any other thing. That makes me think of the kind of change that we go through in the physical world reality that is constant change and so that which is always made new this constant change process is always corrupted which the physical realm is described as being however that which is made but once the spiritual copy or the source form that is goes with us throughout all of our lifetimes if that's something that you believe in i do tend to think that direction that we are eternal in form but not in mortal or physical form and so that which is made but once is never corrupted neither becomes any other thing firstly god secondly the world thirdly man the world for man and man, for God, interesting, of the soul, that part which is sensible is mortal, but that part which is reasonable is immortal. Now, we went over this a little bit last week, so don't worry. We're about to get to where we stopped and continue on. I just wanted to do a whole rundown of the things that are, because that was the first line or the second line here, for there can be no religion more true or just than to know the things that are and acknowledge thanks for those things, for reality, for creation. This is the simple philosophy of hermetics that I've got so far, is to recognize that reality is creation and it is a part of God and you are a part of that, and then to give reverence and piety to creation and reality and tend to it and keep it good. And this is called following the light, as Lao Tzu put it in the Tao Te Ching. However, continuing, first God, secondly the world, thirdly man, and the world is for 
man. <laughs> and man is for God. Of the soul, that part which is sensible is mortal, but that part which is reasonable is immortal. Interesting to think of the difference between sensibilities and reasonable things. Every essence is immortal. Every essence is unchangeable. So the essence of something. Everything that is, is paired. Makes me think of polarity or duality or the poles, the yin and the yang, and that kind of thing. These pairs of good goes with bad, dark goes with light. You cannot have them without the other. So everything is paired. None of the things that are paired stand still. The principle of vibration and polarity, both just explained, maybe. Everything that suffers is sensible now remember sensible is mortal everything that is sensible suffers so suffering goes with mortality everything that is sad rejoices also this is a mortal no 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 and is a mortal living creature and so what was just described there was the nature of life, really, that we find ourselves struggling with sometimes so often is this. Everything that is, is paired. Polarity, good and bad, you know, like we said. But remember, it just is. And it's our human notions judging that. But then everything is paired and it does not stand still. So it is vibrating. And so none of the things that are, not all things are moved by a soul, but everything that is is moved by a soul. That's a deep one. Everything that suffers is sensible, which means mortal, and everything that is sensible, mortal, suffers. However, everything that is sad or in this suffering, in this mortal state, rejoices also and is a mortal living creature. Not everything that has joy, however, is also sad, but is an eternal living thing. So I would add, not mortal. But that's just my opinion. Once again, I enjoy your comments and ideas below. Now, this is where we're getting to where we stopped last time. And so, and this is where it gets deep. But then it says, not everybody is sick. Everybody that is sick. And I really wonder what it means by sick there, because it's probably more of a metaphorical translation than, oh, you've got a cold, or, you know, you've got the sniffles. It's like, I don't think that's what it means here. But more importantly, and I think the most important line, number 37, verse 37, I guess, from Hermes Trismegistus, his first book, is the line five words the mind is in god the mind is in god ladies and gentlemen and that's a very deep idea the mind is in god and it went into a lot deeper description in the hermetica and i'm sure it will in the rest of this wonderful journey we have ahead of us so 38 reasoning and then in parentheses, it says, or disputing or discoursing in man. So the mind is in God, reasoning in man, but then also reason is in the mind. So no thing in a body is true. All that is incorporeal is void of lying. So a relation between incorporeal, non-form, spiritual, immortal, is void of lying. This is just me extrapolating once again. So if you take this differently, then please, that's what this is all about. Remember, constant contempla contemplation 
Pure philosophy is spiritual striving through constant contemplation or meditation so that we can come to know what this really means and then hopefully compare and discuss this openly, which was shut down 2,000 years ago, which is more normal and allowed again now to, to today in modern times at a you know limited level here on these kind of platforms. But... They went in and destroyed the places that these occult, mystical, esoteric, spiritual philosophies were being compared and dis discussed and studied. And so, with that said, the mind is in God, the mind is absent. Reason is in the mind. The mind is absent of suffering. Everything that is made is corruptible. Nothing good is upon earth. Nothing evil is in heaven. God is good. Man is evil. Now, these terms, once again, I'm saying, can be taken, take them with the grain of salt. Good and evil being, you know, human notions. And so there's much meaning. This must mean much more, especially back when it said everybody is sick and everybody that is sick is corruptible. It's, you know, so anyways. Good is voluntary or of its own accord. Evil is involuntary or against its will. The gods choose good things as good things. Time is a divine thing. Law is humane. Malice is the nourishment of the world. Time is the corruption of man. That's very interesting. In four different lines there, it says, time is a divine thing, and then two later, it says, time is the corruption of man. So see, there could be a very um, polar difference opposite difference two things that may be of the spiritual realm the non-physical realm and the things of the mortal realm or the physical realm for a time being divine and then the corruption of man on to number 53 whatsoever is in heaven is unalterable all upon heaven sorry all upon earth is alterable that makes me think back when it said things that change. That which abides is always unchangeable. But that which is unchangeable is eternal. That which is always made or changing is always corrupted. That which is made but once, I'll add, never changing, is never corrupted. Neither becomes any other thing. Then we go all the way to... Number 54, that says, whatsoever is in heaven is unalterable. And number 54, all upon earth is alterable. 55, nothing in heaven is enslaved. Nothing upon earth is free. Wow. That's a big one. So he's saying we're all slaves here on this planet. Are we not free? Open for discussion, ladies and gentlemen. Open for discussion. Powerful nonetheless. Nothing is unknown in heaven. Nothing is known upon earth. The things upon earth communicate not with those in heaven. All things in heaven are beyond guilt. All things upon earth are subject to reprehension. That which is immortal is not mortal. That which is mortal is not immortal. This should be obvious, but important to clarify, it seems. Number 60. That which is sown is not always begotten. But that which is begotten always is sown. 
So that's saying the things that to me, this comes to uh, creating or manifesting in our lives is this idea of planting the seed or sowing the intention into reality and then waiting for the fruit of our sowing of our seeds and ideas and intentions and hopes and wishes and goals. That which is sown, so we can plant a seed, we can sow, you know, an intention or an idea, but it is not always begotten. You don't always get the fruit. However, that which is begotten, that which does produce the fruit, or which does become made manifest in reality, is always sown so it's saying there's a it's saying that you can plant seeds of ideas but they won't always come to manifestation however everything that does come to manifestation was sown as a seed of an idea so in other words you can plant seeds but they won't always grow but everything that does grow was a seed does that make sense <laughs> this is how i'm getting it anyways Number 61, of a dissoluble body, remember we'd have to reference back earlier to what it said about bodies that are dissoluble. There are two times, one for sowing to generation and one from generation to death. So maybe speaking of birth and the passing. 62, of an everlasting body, the time is only from the generation. Maybe speaking of suns, stars, I don't know, though. Corruptible bodies are increased and diminished. See, once again, that makes me think of alchemy, working with metals and things like that. Increased and diminished, or properties or energies, even, that one. Corruptible matter is altered into contraries, to wit, corruption, and generation but eternal matter goes only into itself and its kind that is a very deep bit there i'm going to keep going the generation of man is corruption the corruption of man is the beginning of generation generation there being an interesting word i'm thinking of the uh, beginning of a process, the generating of activity or motion or energy or life. 66, that which reproduces or begets another is itself an offspring or begotten by another. Fascinating. Of the things that are, some are in bodies and some in their ideas. Remember, thoughts are things. And what you think about expands. So we want to be very careful what we think about. Because of the things that are, and remember what we're doing here, if you joined just a few minutes ago, at the beginning of Hermes Trismegistus, his first book, and we're reading from the Corpus Hermeticum, the Divine Pymander, Hermes Trismegistus, original manuscript, but it said in the second line, for there can be no religion or spiritual pursuit, I'll call it, spiritual philosophy, more true or just than to simply know the things that are and then to acknowledge thanks for all things. And so what we're doing now is going through God or Thoth's father or Hermes' father of the list of the things that are and a breakdown of the nature of reality in the universe. I never know what I'm going to title these videos. Hopefully, it's a good one. <laughs> and if you are here, thank you so much for being here. I love and appreciate each and every one of you that's been time here with me and Thoth and Hermes and the wisdom of the Hermetics and the lost wisdom of the ages. And so if you're getting value, consider subscribing and share this with somebody who is like-minded. Now, that which is mortal 
partakes no, that which is immortal partakes not of that which is mortal. Interesting. So of the things that are, some are in bodies, some are in their ideas. So ideas, the things that are in ideas are part of the things that are. And it is important to know that because... There can be no greater pursuit of spirituality than to know the things that are. Now, we're getting close. We only got like a page left here. And that'll lead us on to the second book in the Corpus Hermeticum. Number 68. Whatsoever things belong to operation or working are in a body. That which is immortal partakes not. Of that which is mortal. That which is mortal comes into a body immortal. Ah, see? The immortal soul, or that which is made but only once and is not changing, comes into the mortal body. That which is immortal comes not into a body immortal. That's a deep one. That, but that which is immortal comes into that which is mortal. So a mortal being cannot go into a body immortal. But that which is immortal or spiritual, divine, comes into the physical or that which is immortal. Maybe I'll switch mortal and immortal with physical and spiritual here. That which is spiritual comes not into a body physical. But that which is spiritual comes into that which is immortal. The only difference there is the body and that. Because in the second line, it doesn't say into a body. It says into that which is mortal. Very fascinating. Operations or workings are not carried upwards, but descend downwards. 72. Things upon earth do not advantage those in heaven, but all things in heaven do profit and advantage all things upon earth. Heaven is capable and a fit receptacle of everlasting bodies. The earth of corruptible bodies. The earth is brutish, and heaven is reasonable or rational. Those things that are in heaven are subjected or placed under it, but the things on earth are placed upon it. <laughs> I've never heard that distinction in any spiritual philosophy before. That is hilarious. Let us say that one again. Those things that are in heaven, or the spiritual realm, because remember, we're not talking about the Christian heaven here. Freaking Hermes from the third century, occult mysticism, you know, Egyptian mystery schools and religions and spirituality would not be talking about cherubs in a little, you know, place in the clouds and sky with golden gates and Santa up there judging everybody as God, a man with the white beard. You know what I mean? This is not even close to what's being talked about. So if that's what you think about when heaven is said, I'm glad you're here because this is right where you need to be. Adjusting your own spiritual awareness and understanding of the nature of God and your connection to all of it. That is all of creation that we are a part of. Now, the things upon earth do not advantage those in heaven, but all things in heaven profit and advantage things upon the earth. And then, doo -doo -doo -doo, all the things that are in heaven are subjected or placed underneath of it, to where all the things that are on earth are placed on top of it or upon it. Very fascinating difference there. Heaven is the first element. 
Wow, I wonder if that's talking about the Akasha or the principle of the mind, which is, I believe, the element which every other element, fire, earth, water, and air, springs forth from. Hmm. Fascinating. Providence is divine order. Necessity is the minister and servant of providence. Fortune is the carriage or effect of that which is without order. The idol of operation, a lying fantasy or opinion. That's a mind-blowing one there. What I get there, though, is, uh, once again, this good and bad being human notions of, in the realm of duality and mortality in the physical realm, is this idea of fortune. Oh, how fortunate you are. And the Zen master said, well, maybe. And then the other, you know, later, oh, how unlucky you are. The Zen master said, well, maybe. We'll see, because it all just is. Fortune is the carriage or effect of that which is without order. So without a perfect order and harmony, there wouldn't be a good or bad. Or no, with a perfect order and harmony, there wouldn't be a good or bad. It would just be boom. And even to describe using, see, it's hard to describe this stuff because you use duality words to describe things that are non-dual and it doesn't if you're really getting it, it doesn't make sense. And if you are getting it, then it kind of almost still doesn't make sense. But hopefully you know what I mean. The idol of operation, a lying fantasy or opinion, this idea of fortune or misfortune. Number 80 says plainly, what is God? Question mark. The immutable or unalterable good. 81, what is man? question mark, an unchangeable evil. 82, if you are perfectly, if you perfectly remember these heads, so we just finished, the things that are. He went through by heads, the things that are. And so, now he says again, after saying before he went through, remember what you hear, if you perfectly remember these heads, you cannot forget those things which in more words I have largely expounded unto you. For these are the contents or abridgment of them. Whew. So Thoth just gave us a table of contents of the entire spiritual philosophy. They're being about... 60 chapters, or 60 books, rather, maybe 70. Wow. If you remember perfectly these heads, you cannot forget those things which in more words or books I have largely expounded unto you, for these are the contents or abridged version of those things which I have in more words, largely expounded unto you at other times. I'm extrapolating. 83. Avoid all conversation with the multitude or common people. See, this is my problem. I'm like, so, you ever heard of hermetics? They're like, what? I'm like, yeah, the Egyptian sage guy. They're like, hmm, that's fascinating. And they're probably thinking, this guy watches a lot of History channel or, you know, something like that. I don't know. It's kind of outdated nowadays, but <laughs> does history channel even exist? I don't know, ladies and gentlemen. They definitely don't talk about hermetics. Or do they? No, gosh. If only. However, avoid all conversation with the multitude or common people, for I would not have you subject to envy much less to be ridiculous unto the multitude, as Lao Tzu put it, to some, as I'm on this journey, to many I seem like an idiot, and even more often a fool, 
because for I am living in the way of the Tao, and to most that seems ridiculous. Because, as Bill Hicks put it, life is like a ride. But after a while, we've been on this ride, and we tend to think that it's real. And every now and then, someone will come to us and try to remind us, hey, it's just a ride, this isn't real. And what we do is we call those people idiots and they're ridiculous and you're crazy or you're, you know, a spiritual weird person or whatever it be. Bill Hicks said we kill those people. We get rid of them because we can't have these kind of mystical people in society trying to tell other people that there's another way and you don't have to run the system that has been set up, set up for us to run run the race, so to speak, but let us continue and come to a finishing here of this wonderful little section today. So, I would not have you subject to envy, much less to be ridiculous unto the multitude or common people, for the like always takes to itself that which is like. But the unlike never agrees with the unlike. Profound for today with so many people who, you know, get polarized about opinions. Such discourses as these have very few auditors. And peradventure, very few will have but they have something peculiar unto themselves. Wow, that's a deep one. I'm going to read that one again quicker. For the like always takes it to itself that which is like, but the unlike never agrees with the unlike. Such discourses as these have had have very few auditors, and peradventure very few will have, but they have something peculiar unto themselves. 85, they do not rather sharpen and wet evil, W-H-E-T. They do not rather sharpen or wet evil men to their maliciousness. Therefore, it behooves to avoid the multitude. This is almost like a warning, like really careful if you start to speak this stuff openly to large amounts of people and begin to make influence, you will invoke the maliciousness of those who would disagree. Like it said, the unlike never agrees with the unlike. And so rather than sharpening the wit and you know uplifting evil men, it would rather bring their maliciousness forth. Therefore, it behooves to avoid the multitude and take heed of them as not understanding the virtue and power of the things that are said. But more importantly, as we've discussed today, the things that are. Wow. Wow. Wow, the laws of the universe and the things that are coming to us from the second half of Hermes Trismegistus, his first book. <laughs> I start laughing because the next line is, what do you mean, oh, father? <laughs> I'm like, 30 minutes ago, or 40 minutes, you know, like 40 verses ago, he asked, literally like two lines in, he asked, what then, O oh Father, should a man do to lead his life well? And then God, or his Father, goes on this tangent for like 30 minutes about everything that is in existence or reality, and why not to, and to be careful about this wisdom, and 
I have expanded upon it in many more words to you. This is just the abridged version in the table of contents of this stuff. And after everything, Hermes goes, what do you mean, O oh Father? <laughs> God's probably like, did you not hear what I said? This is hilarious. Sorry. But he said, this is his answer, this, O oh Son. The whole nature and composition of those living things called men is very prone to maliciousness and is very familiar and, as it were, nourished with it and therefore is delighted with it. Now this weight, no, not weight, W-I-G-H-T, this wit, if it shall come to learn or know that the world was once made and all things are done according to providence or necessity, destiny or fate, bearing rule over all, will he not be much worse than himself, despising the whole because it was made? And if he may lay the cause of evil upon fate or destiny, he will never abstain from any evil work. Holy cow. <laughs> I don't know why I said holy cow. <laughs> That's kind of ironic considering what we're researching here. But with that being said, <laughs> wow, that is one of the most powerful verses there to me that was saying that as mortal living men and women here, we have this propensity to be malicious. And because we're so familiar with it in the mortal realm, and we are actually nourished by it, our, the evil, you know, the ego side of us, the survival instinct. And so we somewhat become delighted and pleasured with this giving maliciousness to things that we don't like, which we see go on a lot in the world. But if we shall come to know this great wisdom when we're living from a, this non-spiritual but physical viewpoint of reality, then when we see that reality is this way, when we learn this philosophy, before we've maybe undertaken a process of spiritual evolution in our own minds and bodies, and hearts and souls. But if we learn, if those that are, I guess, still evil minded or stuck in the material, see, this is very open for debate, but once the, it says, if it shall come to learn, the mind that is delighted in maliciousness. That we are very prone to as mortal living beings. That if we come to learn and know that the world was once made and that all things are done according to these universal laws and principles, and we can begin to discover these universal laws and principles and to understand them and how it relates with destiny or fate and providence and necessity, bearing rule over all, universal law, will we not, will he not be much worse than himself already because he will begin despising the whole from this negative perspective? That, oh, okay, everything, because, because if you are stuck in a duality mentality and you don't see the oneness or you don't get above the judgment which is where we began and what we talked about yesterday, the human notions of good and bad as compared to that which is. When we can see reality for what it is and respect that it is creation and we are not God and to judge something as terrible, even though we think it is in our mortal perspective and things are sad and tragedies happen, but 
to really get this and to keep ourselves from what was just being described there I just wow wow I was deleting things on my phone or old notes and there was one note that said be careful of enlightenment because that which is illuminated but is not fully transparent casts shadows and this is what this is talking about right here if you try to become enlightened but you are not yet fully transparent or you haven't done the work yet to remove your past traumas or at least attempting to release and move on and let go from the darkness that we cling to and the judgmental and dark perspectives that we seem to see the world with and rather see it as a oneness and see everything with a sense of appreciation and love and harmony even for that which we used to think sucked quote you know then it could be as god i'm guessing or atum or hermes's father the sage god Thoth is telling us that if if we do this process while we still have con, you know contempt and maliciousness within us that we are familiar to and nourished with and become delighted in in our mortal nature that we're very prone to as quote unquote men human beings then will we not be much worse than ourselves already despising the whole because it was made and if he may lay the cause of evil in our judgmental perspectives upon fate or destiny rather than seeing that as an integral part of our development from the viewpoint of non-duality but yes from the viewpoint of non-duality and respecting fate and destiny as our challenge to learn and grow rather than an evil that is thrust upon us to suffer from he will never abstain from any evil work so if we get stuck in this loop we actually become trapped in an evil cycle because we're judging creation as evil from a delusionary perspective holy wow i had no idea we were going to go there hopefully that tangent made sense ladies and gentlemen it's good for me i'm getting value so i'm guessing you are if i'm getting value rambling or extrapolating on this with myself then you certainly should be so thank you for being here let's finish up the last of hermes trismegistus his first book from the corpus hermeticum and discussing the nature of reality the laws of the universe natural law i don't know number 88 wherefore we must look warily to such kind of people so remember what we were just talking about that begin igno in ignorance they may be less evil for fear of that which is hidden and kept secret. So I'm going to read that last bit again there so we can, you know, put it in a tight little container so it makes sense. Because after he said all the things that are, he said, if you perfectly remember these heads, you cannot forget those things which in more words I have largely expounded onto you. For these were the contents, table of contents, or the abridged version of the entire hermetic spiritual philosophy. Avoid all conversations with the multitude or the masses, common people, for I would not have you fall subject to envy, but much less be ridiculed and be ridiculous unto the multitude. For like always takes unto itself that which is like, 
which is fine, but the problem is the unlike never agrees with the unlike, something that differs from their opinion. Such discourses as these have very few auditors, and peradventure very few will have, but they have something peculiar unto themselves. They do not sharpen and wit evil man to their maliciousness. Therefore it behooves to avoid the multitude and take heed of them as not understanding the virtue and power of the things that are said. Hermes asks, what do you mean, O father? This, O son, the whole nature and composition of those living things called men is very prone to maliciousness and is very familiar, as it were, nourished with it and therefore is delighted with it. Now, this weight, if it shall come to learn or know that the world was once made and all things are done according to providence or necessity to de destiny and fate, bearing rule over all, will this malicious man not be much worse than himself already, despising the whole because it was made? And if he may lay the cause of evil upon fate or destiny, and he will never abstain from any evil work. So I'll add, be very careful. Wherefore, we must look warily to these kind of people, to such kind of people, that being in ignorance, they may be less evil for fear of that which is hidden and kept secret. Boom, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, that was amazing, amazing and incredible and profound. And the little fortune I have here, I use a fortune cookie fortune as a bookmark. It says, through greater effort and hard work, a precious dream comes through. It also comes true. And that concludes... Hermes Trismegistus, his first book in the Corpus Hermeticum. In a rundown and a description of universal and natural law. And next time, ladies and gentlemen, we will be looking at section two in the Corpus Hermeticum called Pomander. And that should be very fascinating. I honestly have no idea where it's going to go, so I'm excited because this hermetic philosophy just keeps getting better and bigger and more and more profound, and it makes more sense the further we dive into it. So hopefully you got value, and thank you for being here. I have the book linked below in the description if you'd like to get it for yourself to put it on your shelf so that you can follow along with me in this series. We'll be going through the whole book like we did with the Hermetica. And so as well, I have my landscape paintings, that one back there in the description below, in my Etsy shop, as well as a link to C60 Purple Power, the most powerful antioxidant known to man. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, seek to achieve and maintain happiness through enlightenment. Seek to discover the hidden wisdom of the ages and the mysteries of our history. And also, remember that there is no way to happiness or enlightenment because happiness is the way. And so when we can bring that to life, enlightenment or happiness, and we can make it the activity that we are able to bring to life, then all the things we've been telling ourselves, oh, when I'm this kind of person or when I get that you know, when I get that much money or I become this spirit, all that becomes irrelevant because we already are there. And then hopefully the entire journey is wonderful. All right. Thank you so much. I love and appreciate all of you that spend time here with me and Hermes Trismegistus and Thoth and uh, all the other wonderful authors and poets throughout the wisdom of the ages, especially Wayne Dyer and Lao Tzu. And so... Love and appreciate each and every one of you. Be sure to share this with somebody who's like-minded. Hit the smash the like button. It helps the algorithms. 
And if you haven't subscribed already, consider subscribing. I'll be back next week, Tuesday and Wednesday. Tuesday Dow, Wednesday Wisdom. And it'll be a good one, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> but just thank you. I appreciate all of you so much. Just got over 800 subscribers recently, and I've been doing this channel for like five years now. I probably have almost 800 videos on here. So it's been a wonderful journey. It's been fun because now it's just a commitment to not trying to, you know, have a successful YouTube channel. I'm trying to have a successful awareness and understanding of the nature of God and reality so that I can increase the quality of my life and my experience. And hopefully through this sharing of that, we can all do that together. Increasing the quality of not only ourselves, but those around us. And hopefully be the tide that lifts all boats and consciousness, ladies and gentlemen, so that we can have an evolution of consciousness. All right, I'm rambling now. Thank you so much. Be sure to support and share this with people that are like-minded so we can get this out there to those who need it. Love you, ladies and gentlemen. Until next week, be the change that you want to see. Be the example that you want to set. Na -na 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 -na.